All right, continuing with this problem, we're trying to find the final temperature, so we need to find Tf. We have this equation, and Tf shows up in two places. So we have to do a little bit of algebra, and I'll put in the numbers for the masses and the specific heats as well. So here we go. The mass of the T is 200 grams, so I have 200 grams, times the specific heat of the T, that's just one, the specific heat, because T is basically water. T is almost entirely water, so it's one calorie per gram degree Celsius, times the change in temperature, and we said that that's 95 minus Tf. And that's going to equal the heat gained by the cup, so we need the mass of the cup, that's 150 grams, times the C for the cup, and we're told that the cup is made of glass, and glass has a specific heat of 0.2, so that's 0.2 calories per gram degree Celsius, and the change in T for the glass, we said, was Tf minus 25. Now, I can immediately simplify this a little bit. Calories per gram degree Celsius on the two sides can cancel out, and so can the grams. So the units all cancel out, which allows me to not worry about them. And I can continue with the algebra here. Notice I have this thing multiplied by 95 minus Tf, so I have to distribute. This thing, which is really just a 200, because 200 times 1 is 200. 200 times the 200 times the 95 minus 200 times Tf, so we'll write that. 200 times 95 is 19,000. So I have 19,000 minus 200 Tf. And over here I distribute also. 150 times 0.2 is 30. So that's 30 times Tf minus 30 times 25. So let's write that. This equals 30 Tf minus 30 times 25, which is 750. So now we just have an algebra equation, kind of like ones we've seen in Algebra 1 class. There's a Tf there, or and, and there, a negative 200 Tf here, and a 30 Tf there. So what can we do? Well, to solve for Tf, if I were to add 200 Tf to each side, then these cancel out. And if I add 750 to each side, then these cancel out. On the left, I have 19,000 plus 750, and I can do that in my head, 19,750. And on the right, I have my 30 TF plus my 200 TF, so I have 230 TF. And then when I divide each side by 230, I end up with T final comes out to be 85.9 degrees Celsius, and that's my answer. And that's in degrees Celsius because these numbers up here were in degrees Celsius. So that's the final temperature. You remember it started with the cup at 25 degrees Celsius and the T at 95 degrees Celsius. We ended up with a final temperature of 85.9, something about right there. 85.9 degrees Celsius. Now notice that it didn't end up right in the middle, halfway between 25 and 95. And there's some reasons for that. One reason is there was more T. We had 200 grams of T and only 150 grams of, of cup. So because there's more T, its initial temperature, 95 degrees, ended up figuring more strongly into the answer than the colder temperature, 25 degrees. Even more significant than that, though, is the specific heat. The T, we said, had a specific heat of 1, because T is mostly water, as opposed to the specific heat for the cup, which was 0.2, because it's made of glass. In other words, water can absorb a lot more heat with less temperature change. So because water has a higher specific heat, um, it, can, uh, it can absorb or lose a lot more heat with less temperature change. So the water didn't change in temperature. You see that distance is a lot less than that. It only changed by um, less than 10 degrees where the, the, the cup heated up by more than 60 degrees. And that's due not just to the difference in mass but mainly in this case to the larger specific heat of water. So there, conservation of energy led us to set up this equation. The heat lost 
by the T equaled the heat gained by the cup. And a problem of this type is often called a calorimetry problem.